Squid Game has been everywhere and Halloween's coming up, so let's go over how to make an epic Squid Game mask for cheap. The LED part's not necessary, but I think it's cool, so I'll go over LED basics too. I cut the mask to be more flat by taking out the nose and mouth. This will help me breathe while rushing between houses, but I also did this because I didn't want the mask to have a pointy mesh nose. Actually, I already lied. I didn't end up using this fabric because while I was scoping it out, I realized the mesh on my chair would work much better. So I cut out the back, and as a bonus, I got to see what the inside of these types of chairs look like, so you're welcome for that. After untying the elastic head strap, I then painted the mask black. I almost could have avoided this because the mesh is pretty dark itself, but I did it just to be safe before attaching the mesh more permanently. Also, if you're up for a fun challenge, make sure you're wearing a white shirt while you're painting. This next part is where my PhD in advanced art came in handy. I used packaging tape to stretch the mesh somewhat flush, and after it was secured, I used a stapler to make it more permanent, and then I trimmed off the inside with some scissors. This level of winging it usually doesn't work for me, but to my surprise, it actually looked half decent. Next, I cut strips of the Eva foam to mimic what the Squid Game mask looks like. I made them extra long just to trim off later. I painted them black on all sides. After they dried, I attached them to the mask. I stapled the bottom straps to the mask and super glued the accessory strip. You probably shouldn't use super glue, but that's all I had. Someone should comment a better alternative. Anyway, I then stapled the horizontal strap, and things were looking pretty good. I just needed to trim off some extra foam and add another layer of paint. If you've seen my other YouTube videos, you know that as a mechanical engineering major, I like to think about electricity like water, so voltage is like the pressure, and each LED needs between 3 to 3.2 volts to force the electrons to jump this gap inside the LED, which is what actually produces the light. Typical AA batteries supply 1.5 volts, so I'll need two batteries in series to get 3 volts. However, I also need to make sure the flow of electrons, also known as the current, is not too large or else that's too much power and the LED will break or explode or catch on fire, which could be dangerous. So how do I control how much current the LED sees? Well, that's dictated by Ohm's law, which is a super simple equation. The current is the voltage divided by the resistance. The resistance is how much the circuit obstructs the flow of electrons. Since the wire and LEDs in our circuit both have very little resistance, we need to add a resistor to our circuit to limit the flow. Each of the LEDs need 20 milliamps of current to function. I'm using 9 LEDs for the triangle design, so solving Ohm's law, I get that I need around 17 ohms. I only had 10 ohm resistors and I'm lazy, so I just went with it and hoped that they were within the tolerance of allowable current for these LEDs. While in the end it did work for me, you probably should be more conservative. A higher resistance means less current, so they could potentially be dimmer LEDs, but that's better than them exploding on you. Now with the circuit designed, you need to be careful to make sure you are actually soldering the circuit properly. These are the same circuits, just shaped differently. The second one is how I plan to actually solder it. The positive terminal of the battery is going to connect to the outer triangle, and the LEDs bridge the gap to the inner triangle, which is the negative terminal. I'm using copper tape for the terminals instead of wire. The LEDs are directional, so make sure the short end is soldered to the negative term. After I soldered all the LEDs to my cardboard cutout with the foam, I attached a few feet of 18 gauge wire to the positive and negative terminals so that I could hold the batteries in my pocket. The next part is cutting a hole in the mask and feeding both wires, but make sure you know which is the negative and which is the positive if you use the same color. Once the wires are through, tape them down to keep them out of the way. Then I soldered in the resistor and attached each wire to the appropriate terminal on the battery case. Before finishing up by gluing the triangle to the mask, I tested the circuit to make sure it worked, and thankfully it did. I forgot to mention, I also painted a black triangle on the outside. After everything was secured, I added electrical tape to keep the wires together and to cover up any exposed wire. I put links to everything I used in the description on YouTube. I also put other Squid Game costumes there if purchasing is more your style. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.